what's your opinion on the psychological aspect of TMD, all the psychosocial diagnoses out there? Well, what have you seen? <clears throat> uh, to be quite truthful, it is not, in most patients, it's not a primary concern. It's a secondary concern. Right. So if you, look, if you look at that conceptually, a primary concern would be, okay, they're psychologically stressed. And from their psychological stress, they're getting all of these, all of these bodily ills. They're getting ulcers in their stomach, and you know, they're high strung, and they clench their jaws, and they hurt their TM joints, and so forth. To me, that's passe. The psychological stress in patients comes from not getting an answer. So they're misdiagnosed, or they're mismanaged, or they put hope in a certain treatment and they find out it doesn't work. Yep. And they get psychologically frustrated. And family stress turns up, and marital stress, and social stress, and they begin to withdraw more and more and more. It's almost like somebody who's abused. Right. And they're abused by a lack of diagnosis. They're abused by not getting management that helps them feel better. And they get into kind of this lifelong pathway sometimes where they lose hope. And by there's losing word again. Hope, hope, when they lose hope, they feel like there's no answer. And they get scared, quite frankly. I mean, as a surgeon, you can well imagine what I deal with with patients who hear that they should have responded to simple treatment. They should have responded to a bite adjustment. They should have responded to a splint. They should have responded to medication management because that's what the expert told them. Right. And they learn to not trust promises of techniques and procedures that are going to make them better. So as a surgeon, I kind of have high stakes with the patient. Yeah, you, do. you know, here we're going to do something very invasive to try to make you feel better. And a lot of them look at you and they say, well, you know, I trusted this, this doctor and that doctor, you know, why do I trust you? So they lose hope, they lose trust. And, you know, that's, that's something I think from a psychological standpoint, we have to earn back from patients. Mm -hmm. Until they can trust you, and until they can really understand why you're recommending what you're going to recommend, they're going to avoid management. Right. Okay, so that's, that's a big part, no matter what we do. And by the time they see you, they're typically in pain. So it's at the end game. I mean, not all the time, but much of the time. Well, and, and not only that, but the pain very often is recruited in multiple layers. And so what starts out is, it, everything starts out simple. And pain starts out as a simple presentation as well. They may have some degree of muscle pain, for example. Uh, because of a masticatory system problem or because of a TMJ problem. And the tie-in back to CRPS type 1 is ongoing irritation to sensory nerves. Sure. Okay? And there becomes a so-called threshold event. And the threshold event, for example, could be a very simple dental procedure. could be a restorative procedure. I've seen it. And they begin to get this increased pain patterning from that procedure, they end up blaming the procedure. But the procedure may be the last thing in a long line of prior traumas. And I look at these patients as having kind of cumulative damage. For example, there could have been a car accident when they began to learn to drive. There could have been removal of wisdom teeth. Uh, there could have been a little whiplash injury later on. And those types of traumas set them up to eventually get a threshold event, okay? And then all of a sudden the dentist is the causative. The way they perceive it, it's your fault. You did this to me. I was fine until this. Correct. And How tying, many of us haven't seen that? And tying yeah. back to injured TM joint foundations, you know, they may have a certain level of TMJ pain. They're dealing with it on an ongoing basis. That oftentimes is trauma-induced. Sure. And then they try to go through a dental procedure, maybe to help them with their TMJ. It could be a bite adjustment. And the bite adjustment triggers the CRPS layer. Now they've got multi-layered pain. Now they're, 
Now they're that type of patient who ends up going doctor to doctor, office to office, because they're not going to get answers to that type of pain. Yeah. Okay, the pattern recognition isn't there unless people have experienced these patients. And then, with pattern recognition of those who went before that patient, that patient becomes a simpler standard. Okay, they become yeah. somebody that we're more familiar with, uh, somebody that we can decrease the psychological stress in, and somebody that you can give real hope back to.